Hello everyone, no respawns here, hope you're doing well. So, as promised, I've got a little bit of a different video for you today. So I have, um, on recommendation of you guys actually, because um, it basically been mentioning to me for months, uh, when it was in early access, and then I kept seeing pictures of it pop up on just everywhere, it just seemed to appear, I think, because it only came out officially full release, I think it was in February. And so basically this is Subnautica, it's a really, really cool survival game uh, by a dev called Unknown Worlds, who I hadn't actually heard of. They've done another game called Natural Selection 2, which I've never heard of, or I think I've heard of, but I've never played. This is, this is the first game of theirs I've played, and it's really, really, really good. So what I want to do, because this game has a building function in it, as well as obviously a survival function, um, which well, is a survival building game, it's completely single player. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this video up into two halves. The first half will be me showing off my base. Uh, so those of you interested in the building side uh, can definitely uh, have a look there and that way you won't get any as such spoilers but beyond you know just you know seeing what you can actually build and then after that I just want to do a quick review kind of my thoughts on the game which I'm not obviously going to say any story spoilers but because this is quite an exploration and experience it's really it's one of those you want, kind of want to know as little as possible going in I'm going to try and be as I'm going to mention a couple of things just to kind of like experience like with monsters and stuff like that and the sea creatures which might just infer on your experience if you haven't played it before. So if you don't want any spoilers I will mention when I'm going to kind of do it into the review section. So basically just going to give you, I'm just going to get an opening for how the game works. So you basically crash land on an alien world. This literally happens in the opening cutscene. There is the ship you crash in. Here is your escape pod and basically you have, there is a story that you get from operating the radio and also discovering things. It's actually quite a good story as well. It's, it's quite, um, it's very much down to your own discovery, a lot of it. Like, half of the story you can, you have to find yourself, and the other half you get from the radio beacons. It's, it's really, really good. And, yeah, obviously, we guess the whole thing takes place in the sea. So, basically, I'm in where you start off. It's actually slightly randomised. You have a kind of, I think it's a, a 400... 200 kilometer space that you can spawn in so this is actually my second save I deleted the other one because I, I wanted to start again and basically yeah so let me just pop in so the building function this is really good it's not Fallout 4 com complex as the way it, best way of working at it but it's 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 quite robust I'm not going to show you too much actually I'm not going to show you that on the fabricate because basically I don't need to because I show you with this instead so this is where you start off, by the way, in case you notice so you have a little bit of a storage container, it's quite... Oh, I've got stuff in here! Got some gold and everything. I didn't realise I still had stuff in there. And that's the radio that uh, that you actually get all of your quests from. But this is obviously you don't want to show you, so I built two things. So the first thing is this, which isn't exactly very pretty, but I'll show you. Anyway, this was my, uh... This was my second step, this is the first thing that I made, because... Basically, you probably see already, it's got loads of plants. And I was going for a thing where, um... So basically, I'm pretty sure the respawn rate for some of the animals was quite low. Um, and you basically use... I was eating the fish. And I just... They were really cute and nice. And I felt really guilty. So I've gone completely veggie in this save. <laughs> uh, so basically, what this is, is my little kind of arboretum, basically. Where I've just kind of collected all of the plant life. So basically, you can uh, pretty much attach anything like that. And get a seed from it. Uh, by the way, if you, it doesn't clear on that... If you want to, with the food, you just have to slash it with your knife to get your seed, yeah? That's that's what you do, right? So I didn't realise this at first and actually lost these melons in my first save, marble melons. Because I didn't realise you needed to slash them and then I ate them all and they're only a finite number. But yeah, this is basically the first thing I built. So you see I've made these little, it's very, very kind of grassy and it's very, very nice. It's a bit of a frame rate drop, I'm afraid, but that's just because I'm recording and it's being a bit twatty. But basically, yeah, this isn't as exciting, but this was my necessary... This is basically just where I get all of my seeds now. So basically, this is all of the, I think, all of the plants that you get on land. And then you also get these plants over here. The game music is quite cool, by the way. I've not used any of my music. This is the game music, just the record. And I've also been collecting plant life, actually, from all over the game and actually replanting here. Wait a second, do I actually... I think I have some... Yes. Spotted dock leaf. Cool. I can't, um, the way it works, those you know, these are outdoor planters and then those are indoor planters, so you can't have indoor plants outdoors and vice versa. Right, so let's show you my actual base. Now, where is it? <clears throat> where are you? Where are you? I've got a beacon somewhere. Where is it? I 
can't see. I've heard correctly, it's like slightly obscured by the colour. I changed, I should really make it more. There it is, see? I changed the colour and it's a really dumb idea. I also, have to, I should really change the name of it because I'm, the reason why it's called Thermal Vent is because it's where a thermal vent is. It took me ages to find this thermal vent. I, I kept losing it. I stumbled upon it. I was like, oh, cool. I'm going to build a base there later. And I just lost it. And it's not even very far away. It's only, you know, it's about, what, 300 kilometers from where my life pod is. But I just, for whatever reason, I just could not find the damn thing. So as you can see, the game is, it's very, very pretty. It runs quite well. So I've got a GTX 970, um, i5 6600K, like 16 gigabytes of RAM. This is my base. And the only reason you're getting a little bit of jagginess right now is... Sorry about that siren outside. This is East London. But the reason you're getting a little bit of jagginess right now is just because I'm recording and it tends to obviously be quite demanding. So this is my base. As you see, I've built it on the side of a thermal vent. Those are thermal power plants. Uh, the th so the building function is very, very modular. It's very much, those of you who've watched C-Lab uh, 2021, really good. You should watch it. It's very funny. And uh, basically it makes me think of that. So I've been humming the theme song constantly. It's quite good. It's not as, as like, there aren't nearly as many buildings as, say, something like Fallout 4. It is what I what I describe as kind of a survival game building function, which means that everything almost has a utility. This, though I will say, Subnautica has a lot more kind of decorative elements than I was expecting from this game. As to give you an example, something like... I mean, I always think of games like Forest or like uh, Rust, and I, I, I guess maybe because I played those guys, games early in their development cycle, there just weren't many, when I first played them, I haven't really played them since, there weren't actually many decorative items, so th it was quite pleasant to kind of see what you could do. And also, um, you find loads of stuff. So let's go in, I will show you my vehicles in a sec, don't worry. So let's pop in. Welcome aboard, Captain. So basically, I always like to have this door closed, just because... Basically, you can actually just have this hatch there and go straight in, but it just seems stupid that it doesn't let loads of water in. So for RP, this is my actual kind of air hatch that stops the water flooding in. But yeah, it's quite cool. So basically, in my original base, it was quite messy. This one has got a, a theme to it in terms of the layout of the room. So this is my living area. A load of this stuff you do pick up and find in the game. So when you are exploring, keep a look around because you can find posters, toys. One thing I will say, I really like the fact that I found all of this stuff. I've mentioned this before as a slight criticism of Fallout 4. In the fact is the building is kind of shallow. And it would be nice to have something more kind of progression related building items and I like the fact there are loads of like really unique decorations I find. There aren't many um, there are actually a couple which I haven't actually laid out yet like a little ship and stuff and an extra poster but I'll get to those in a sec This is my room. I really like it because I've got my little view portal and I've got my submarine which I've named Macarius after the Lord Solar himself obviously. That's a Warhammer 40k reference by the way I've got flowers, got my little battery chargers. It's it's quite I'm quite good at games like this because I, I I really like kind of these single player survival games. And I really like that it's a really well designed game in terms of like things like just like battery chargers for all of your um, kind of power supplies and just kind of it, everything kind of blends together. Let's actually make some coffee as well. Yeah, I don't know where he's getting the coffee beans from, but it looks nice. You can even, this is actually quite cool. So basically you can get these picture frames, you can scan them in Rex. And if I go here, and you can take screenshots in game, and then you can set them as picture frames, which I really, really like. It's, it's quite a clever way of doing screenshots. And also you can pr add a press of a button. Say, um, I'll show you something non-spoilery. That one's actually really good. So I can then share that one on Steam, which is quite grand. So basically this is, so this is the living area. And I've divided my room into, this is where my docking bays are for my ships. And this is where um, a lot of my other stuff is. So I've kind of, this is where the power and there's a uh, um, little specimen tank. So again, I'm going for like a kind of like veggie green version of my base. So there's no nuclear reactors or anything like that. And all the power is basically all natural. So I've got my two water filtration machines, which I haven't actually emptied. Um, but that reason being is because my locker is full of water, which is quite grand. I've got a biomass reactor, but to be honest, you see my power is, is quite high. I might actually have a few thermal plants. 
up here, for some reason always does that in the interior ladders, is my specimen tank, which is very, very neglected. I haven't really decorated this area very much at all, to be honest. There are a few barren areas. Um, this is my very cute Mr. Cuddlefish, which you can find the egg to hatch him if you, if you search around. That was his baby photo down there. I'm not going to tell you where the egg is. I found mine in an area that was story related. So as long as you follow the story and are observant, you should find it. Let's go here first. So let's go a picture of the wreck. This is, um, this was, I, I was going to turn this into something else, but I couldn't fit anything else here. So it's going to be like my little, I'm going to decorate a bit more, but it's going to be kind of, it's kind of little kind of chill out area. I just like the fact that you can see the thermal vent and it's also killing animals every now and again, which is quite hilarious. This is my scanner room. This is where I do my science and my scanning. Also, the modification bay is over here. This is very cool. Just that there's a little, um, you can basically search for anything. I've got upgrades to upgrade the range of it. So scanner room, I think mine goes up to about 500 meters now, half a kilometer. And basically you can search for all of the various, well, it's loads of the various kind of items that you can find. It's really, really useful. And then you get a little extension which actually adds it to your HUD so you can then swim around and find them. It's quite cool. So that's that. It's quite a small base. I'm one of those people, and um, whenever I play a game with this, I try and fit as much as I can into as small a space as possible because that way it feels a bit more cluttered. So now I have two of my, what they're called, moon bases, I think they're called. One second, let's check. They're called moon... Moon pools, that's what they're called. And I've got to decorate these a bit more, but they each have two storage lockers and a vehicle upgrade console, as well as a power cell charge, and that's for your actual power cells for your vehicles. The music, by the way, randomly starts and stops. Sorry about that. This is my sea moth. I'm actually going to make a second one of these because originally I had uh, this kind of mech suit called the prawn suit docked to the other one, but now that's permanently docked in my sub, so I might just have two just for the sake of it. Also named after Corex, Primarch of the Raven Guard. Let's actually have a quick swim. So basically, this you build quite early on. The way you find all of the items in the game is you have to scan wreckage of them. And you have to scan a certain number of fragments, and then you can basically eventually build it. It's quite... This is one of the early... Well, this is the second one. I'll show you the, the first one you get. Oh, I think you actually saw it when I was swimming around in that... Um, what's it called? What the fuck is it called? And it's really nice. Anyway, but let me show you the third thing. Oh, what's this called? This thing. I can't remember what it's called. What's it called? Sea Glide. That's it. So Sea Glide you get first. Then you'll get the Sea Moth. Then you'll get the Prawn Suit. And then you'll get Macarius, also referred to as the Cyclops Submarine. So basically, the, the game kind of works in a bit of a stage. So the early half, you'll be mostly in your Sea, your sea Moth. And some people... Oh, I've got another of those fucking things. Sorry. Um, slight spoiler, but these little fuckers just... You don't get them very often. Come here. No. Um, you don't get them outside, but they're native to a certain, a very deep area of the game, and I've got loads of them stuck, and they drain the power of it. It's really bloody annoying. But yeah, basically, so you kind of spend most of your time in the sea moth. Some people don't like it. I love the um, Cyclops with a fiery passion. It's just, I really like boats, and I'll show you inside. It's like, if you ever want to roleplay actually piloting a submarine, this is it, because it actually has an interior. Um, I'm not going to show you, but so basically, because I don't want to show you the stuff inside, because it might be slightly spoilerific, but it comes with these lockers. Oh, yeah, getting stuck behind the door, David, when it opened. This is the prawn suit, which I'll show you in a sec. This is here. And then you can go up these ladders here. But you actually pilot it, like, it, it's so well done. Oh, I've got my upgrades, power cells more power cells and you have to obviously actually you actually have to take these out as well so I can unload them if I want um, which is quite cool upgrade that's the actual engine as such um, one thing you can actually build inside this um, I haven't actually decorated this very much I've seen some of them which are really really well decorated but for example I've actually got um, fruit trees a fabricator I've got that's the modification station and then I've got a radio as well and also my tree naturally is sticking through the side so this becomes something of a mobile base in the second half of the game and it actually can dive deeper than the sea moth that's the reason why you actually have to use this if you want to kind of continue the story because of the fact that you need to go to 
really like the sea moth can go up to 900 meters and the deepest area of the game is 1000 just under 1700 technically it's not the deepest area because there's an edge of the map that just goes on forever but anyway so basically the way you drive this is just amazing so you actually have to start the engine up and that by the way if you can hear it is another police siren my power is a little bit low however i forgot i can do this it's a bit dark by the way so sorry in advance um, actually, I could even sleep. I'll show you it again in a sec when I sleep. But basically, so I can... I've got a module which allows this to... Let's turn the sonar on. Which allows this to um, charge via heat. And I was actually going to park it over my thermal vent. And I completely forgot. So let's park it over the thermal vent so it can charge up. But basically, so... It comes... Oh, actually, it's getting daytime already. Fantastic. So this is so much fun. It drains battery like an absolute nightmare, having the, the sonar on. But it comes with so many modules. I don't actually have any torpedo bays installed, but you can run it for silent running. You've also got these various cameras as well. So it is... And you do use them as well, especially when you get to the lower areas of the game, because you're actually... Um, it's, it's really quite dangerous, <laughs> basically. So you have to be aware of what you're doing. I can actually just park you here, can't I? Right here, and then I should. Yeah, that's actually not any getting damaged. Basically, that's it, just it's some um, collision thing. So basically, that is the, the Cyclops. I don't want to show off the Cyclops too much, in the sense, because I don't want to feel as if I'm kind of spoiling it for you. Because it is a, it's quite a fun experience. So if you ever wanted to pilot a submarine, this is basically as close as you're going to get. So this is the prawn suit. Ooh, and I'm going to drop straight into that. It's fine because it's a beauty anyway. Uh, this is basically your kind of alien Ripley mech suit thing, um, which basically really makes you quite tough. And you get various extensions. I don't actually have many of the um, modifications for this. I just have one which makes it so it can do that a little bit better than it normally would. And it also has a drill bit, which I can... Well, drill things. Uh, mainly because later in the game you need to drill quite a lot of stuff to get some of the materials. That's a really good idea leaving that there. Though I am a bit worried I might get a little bit singed, but it'll be fine. So basically, that is my base, and these are my vehicles. This this um the prawn suit, by the way, is called Vulcan because it's kind of the bro suits and Vulcan being the broest of all of the Space Marine Primarchs. So that's my that's my rather funky little base. I'm quite pleased with it. You can build literally anywhere in the game. So, for example, I've chosen quite a safe spot. But if you wanted to go to somewhere really, really deep uh, with, you know, a, a bit more of a weirder looking biome. I've seen some amazing bases that are actually built inside these uh, kelp farms. It's just that there was a bit, a bit of a mess in there. And I really wanted to be next to the thermal vent. But yeah, it's it's a very, very cool game. The building is good. I think if I had to kind of upgrade it is maybe... Actually, let me show you the, the various elements. So basically, I've upgraded... This will be slightly spoiler in terms of the things you can get, so sorry in advance. But So actually, these are the main components. So as you can see, it's kind of very modular and standard. But that, in terms of actual structure, is obviously significantly less than something like Fallout. Then you have... This is where you get more your powered stuff. I think it's how it's organized. I think this will be exterior stuff is the way it's worked out. So for example, solar panels, thermal plants, transmitters, floodlights, grow beds, uh, air pumps, and then interior structure stuff. So ladders, filtration, bulkheads, vehicle upgrade consoles, bioreactors, nuclear reactors, which I don't use, um, and alien containment. And then you've got kind of more storage stuff, I guess which is quite good, and aquariums and kind of the various power stuff. And then this stuff is actually purely aesthetic, though some of us do stuff. So, for example, you get coffee from the coffee vending machine and you get snacks from the vending machine there. So it's quite cool. And also, again, you find the decorative items. If I were to, in terms of how I would improve the building, I would definitely give us a little bit more flexibility to change the shape of... Because as, as you can see, this, the actual shape of these modules is quite standardized. I think that kind of is a slight point to it. In the fact is that it's meant to look like these are all fabricated by kind of, you know, standard designs. But it would be nice to kind of make things a different other shape. And also, unless I'm completely missing something, I don't believe you can change the color of these buildings. Which is a shame. I, I, I've gone for the kind of 
default white colour just because I wanted them all buildings to match. But you can change the colours of your all of your vehicles in the vehicle mod station and actually just inside the the cyclops. Um, but then alongside that as well, so there are lots of decorative items you find, like kind of, you know, so those kind of those teddy bears, things like that, and posters. I just think they should just increase the the amount of them. That would be basically be an amazing, because I think it's quite fun to discover them and kind of stumble upon them. It's just, for example, there aren't really, I think there are only like 10 different items you can find. There are lots of them, but it would be nice to kind of, you know, give us like, just one item that you found, like really unique stuff that you just can only find in certain areas. And also they randomize where these things are actually found to an extent. So it, w it would be kind of fun to, you know, to stumble across, you know, like a, a doll. There are a couple of things which I haven't get. I, there's actually, ooh, oh, I need a drink. Um, there are a couple of things I haven't picked up yet. I know where they are, I just haven't got around to grabbing them. But yeah, so that is kind of my little, my base tour. It's very, very cool. I quite like it. I might end up building another base kind of deeper down got my little thermal ones but I like this because it's quite safe here and it's got a kind of nice view and I like parking my my cyclops there and charging it up via the vent so right now what I'm gonna do is just kind of do a little bit of a review um, I've obviously mentioned the building but that's not really spoilerific so I want to kind of talk about the game a little bit broader my thoughts and kind of generally that kind of stuff so obviously there will be slight spoiler element to this so just as you've been warned if you just want to know my kind of non-spoiler too long didn't read it's a very good game it's available on all platforms i think it's about 20 quid and it's often on sale so it's absolutely worth picking up if anything oh my only critics critics criticisms rather would be are more wishlist stuff rather than actual criticisms right anyway, i'm going to talk about the game a bit more now i won't spoil anything but i will kind of talk about the world a bit so you have been warned if you don't want your exploration ruined in any way so right basically the game is really really atmospheric it's very very scary um if you're like me where you're a little bit i'm one of those weird people i actually really love boats but i'm scared of the sea and it it is very especially in the early game it is just kind of terrifying because especially when you don't know what's in each of the biomes uh, once you get kind of further in the game and have been pl i've been playing this save for example for 20 hours or 20 25 hours and so I, I know where the dangerous biomes are i know what's in them so for example like i know where or when i'm not safe and that does take a little bit off but i think that doesn't bother me because the fact that that would be how a survival situation would work that being said, I'm actually going to quickly drink so I don't want to die while we're... Vital signs stabilizing. And cool. Um, so that being said, I one criticism I have is... Well, a two. So basically, the game is amazing, right? I absolutely love it. It is a little bit small, but you don't realize it until maybe until you get the Cyclops. So basically, the, the actual map is around... It's basically four square kilometers and about two kilometers deep. So it's a 3D game and there's loads of detail. And there is, like I said, I, I've basically racked up 25 hours on this save. And, you know, it's a 20 quid game and I'm not finished yet. I'm nearly to the end. I know I am because there's another fucking siren. God damn you, East London. Uh, I'm nearly to the end because I actually just came back from a particularly deep area of the game. Like as in depth wise and, and deep because it was quite cool too. But the thing is, right, so basically the latter side of the game is you, or it is kind of meant for you to be in the Cyclops. And it is awesome. It's really, really fun. I just think that to really appreciate the Cyclops, you need more exploration. You need more wide open sea for you to explore. Um, they are going to be doing expansion, which is going to be kind of an ice biome. So that will add more. I just hope, because for example, I think, I think if they made it about four or maybe like, yeah, about four times the size. So maybe like, say 16 square kilometers or yeah, something like that. Because the thing is, it's not like, say for example, Fallout 4 has, I think it is a bigger map, but it, it's still quite a small map compared to something like GTA, but it's quite dense. There's lots to explore, as this is obviously, there is lots to explore, but a lot of it is just these, these biomes here, which look awesome. But I think because of the fact that isn't say, you know, like loads of different buildings and like high, high detail in the same way as Fallout, 
it would be really awesome if they made it bigger. If they make a next one, oh, that's, um, these are safe, by the way. <laughs> Spoiler. Um, <laughs> but these are just little guys that, well, not little guys, big guys that float around. But, yeah, I, I think they could make it bigger. It's not small, but I feel I would really enjoy my kind of my mobile base in uh, in my Cyclops, especially if I had, like, a massive area for me to explore. You know, I loaded up with supplies and kind of went exploring. Uh, for example, like, where I just came from was really, really fun, the deep area. But I now know that I've kind of done the deep area now, and there's not really much deep area for me to explore anymore, which is a bit of a shame. Now, alongside that, and this is... Like, the other one's just a wish list. This one is a maybe slight criticism. Is... This is really kind of atmospherically spoilerific. It's not really spoilerific, but... So I'm good at survival games, right? And there are big, big fish called leviathans. And they are big. That's one of them, but it's a, that's a passive, non-aggressive. Now, the leviathans are dangerous, right? And they are creepy, especially in the early game when you haven't... Not used to seeing them. But once you learn how to navigate around them, their threat level just plummets a bit. And I kind of wish they made them a bit more aggressive and a bit more dangerous. And also bigger. So they are big, and some of them are really big, but they're not as big as you... They're like, I think, again, this is a slight spoiler, but like, I think they're about, I think the biggest one's about 160 meters across or something. And... That's not really that big when you're swimming around it in a submarine. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's not actually massive. It, those of you, the kind of scale I would love for them to do is... Those of you who have played Shadow of the Colossus and have gone into... There's a... Well, the Colossi obviously are massive anyway. But there's one where you're in a desert and it's this giant, like, sandworm. And it looks... It's a bit smaller when you get up close to it, to be fair. But it is still huge. And it's that kind of scale they could have done because of the fact this is the open sea. And also I kind of wish that it was more incredibly dangerous. I mean, they are deadly, like, if you're not smart, but if you're clever. For example, so I was, you know, flying around in this. And as you probably gathered already from seeing maneuver around, it's very, very cumbersome, right? But you can put it into silent mode, you can kind of stealth around with it. And I did have a couple of account encounters with some leviathans. And I actually got away fine. I, you know, I had a, a couple of... It's actually quite cool. You actually get leaks and you have to go outside and repair it. It's really, really... It's very, very role-play fun. But at the same time, that they, the threat of the Leviathans is a lot worse than the reality of the Leviathans, basically. They still have to avoid them, and it is fun to avoid them. There's no point. They will, you know, wreck your shit. But they're not that hard to avoid and once I realized that it did kind of drop a little bit and just generally the aggression of a lot of the the wildlife isn't maybe as high as it could be especially once the second you get like a vehicle they tend to be a lot easier to avoid that get again it's more if you're just not dumb but yeah so that would be maybe like my only real criticisms of the game right now. In terms of its current state, it's absolutely amazing. This is, um, I saw someone comment on Steam and it basically sums it up really well. This is the game No Man's Sky should have been, even though it's, you know, like a fraction of the size. In terms of the exploration, that, you know, that there is lots of story exploration, the, the variation, the biomes, just the building element is really quite solid for what way better than I was expecting and you can make you know something quite cool and really kind of make it feel like your own home and I hope I hope they do add to it as I said I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what the ice biome is going to be like and maybe in if they do a, a second because they've only got two games right now and this game's done really really well so maybe with the devs they'll hopefully make a sequel that's huge and I can you know be in my cyclops and just kind of swim around and explore the sea and it'll be so cool. I I'd love to be able to kind of like Yeah, it's so scale wise like, you know, I you can you can kind of swim across the the entire area Reasonably not it doesn't take very long. Yeah, if you actually look at the time it takes But anyway, I, I hope you guys liked that I definitely highly highly recommend you pick this up if you like this kind of thing single-player game I believe it's available on all platforms it's definitely available on PC, and I'm pretty sure it's available on the consoles. I'm, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I have seen it. Um, I'm using an Xbox controller now, so it's definitely available on Xbox. I just, I could 
probably check actually if it's available on PS4, but my hands are currently holding a controller and that would involve minimizing the screen. Uh, so basically, yeah, definitely pick it up if you like this kind of thing. You know, it's 20 quid, it's it's definitely worth it, and it's really good fun. It, it's quite an atmospheric game, and you will enjoy it, I highly recommend. And yes, um, I will probably now do maybe videos on this if, say, if they add new content. I won't really do building videos, because you can see it is ultimately quite limited. You know, there's not really, like, anything beyond just building a base at a different location and changing maybe the way I structure it. There's not really much to do. But anyway, as always, follow me on Twitter at no respawns. I will have a building video up on the weekend with Fallout 4. Um, but until then, I'm going to probably do a bit of exploring of the abyss in my submarine and have a good time. And yes, you people have a lovely week. Take care.